Good afternoon, this is Kathleen Drew, Chair of the Energy Facility Site Evaluation Council. Welcome to our May monthly meeting. Ms. Grantham, will you call the roll? Certainly. Department of Commerce. Elizabeth Osborne, President. Department of Ecology. Department of Fish and Wildlife. Department of Natural Resources. Lana Young, present. Utilities and Transportation Commission. Casey Brewster, present. For local government and optional state agencies for the Horse Heaven Project, Benton County, we have Ed Brost. He is muted on the phone, but he is present. For Badger Mountain, Douglas County, Jordan Julio. Watoma Solar for Benton County, Dave Sharp. Washington State Department of Transportation, Paul Gonseth. Hop Hill Solar, Benton County, Paul Crouppen. For Carriager Solar, Click Attack County, Matt Childs. And for Walula Gap for Benton County, Adam File. Assistant Attorney Generals, John Thompson. Present. Jenna Slocum. Zach Packer. Present. And do we have any administrative law judges present? This is Judge Torum. I'm present on the line. Thank you. For council staff, I will be calling those who are uh, anticipated to speak today. I have Amy Moon. Amy Moon, present. Sarah Randolph. This is Joanne Snarsky. I'll be uh, stepping in for Sarah. She she had a had to um, step out, so I'll step in for her um, summaries today. Thank you, Joanne, and I will count you as present. Uh, Lance Caputo. Present. John Barnes. Present. And for operational updates, Kittitas Valley Wind. Jared Cassidy, present. Wild Horse Wind Power Project. Jennifer Galbraith, present. Grace Harbor Energy Center. Shahalis Generation Facility. Jeremy Smith, present. Columbia Generating Station. Columbia Solar. Thomas Cushing, present. And Goose Prairie Solar. Jacob Christ, present. And do we have anyone present for the Council for the Environment? Yes, yeah, Sarah Reineveld and Yuri Corral. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. There is a quorum for the regular council as well as the Horse Heaven Council. Thank you. And uh, the other councils as well. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, in front of us, Council, we have the proposed agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the proposed agenda? Lena Young, so moved. Stacey Brewster, second. Been moved and seconded. All those in favor of adopting the agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda is adopted. Moving on to the meeting minutes. We have two sets of meeting minutes. First, we'll take up the April 17th monthly council meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve the meet, uh, monthly meeting minutes from April 17th? Elizabeth Osborne, so moved. Thank you. Second. Stacy Brewster, Bradley. second. I did not find any um, corrections to make with the monthly council meeting minutes. Is there anyone else who'd like to make any corrections? Yes, this is Amy Moon. I have one on page 29, line 12. OK, go ahead. Um, it. Instead of saying were the case um, and, it should be any, A-N-Y. 
Okay. And Thank that's you. it. You're welcome. Anyone else? Hearing none, um, all those in favor of adopting the meeting minutes from April 17th as amended, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are adopted. Moving on to April 23rd, um, Walula Gap informational meeting and land use hearing minutes. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? Stacey Brewster, is that moved? Thank you. Second? Lenny Young, second. Thanks. I do have a few corrections here. On page 11, line 10, the word warp, W A R P, should be wrap, W R A P. On page 11, line 21, the word R A R E should be area, A R E A. On page 12, line 6, the word B, B E E, should be B E E N. And on page 22, line 18 through page 31, the um, notation of Ms. Grantham should be Ms. Shirley. Are there any other corrections? Chair Drew, really quick, this is Ms. Grantham. Uh, it is Ms. Shiley, it's not Shiley. Shirley. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I had that written down, but I said it wrong. Okay. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> Correction to me, that should be Ms. Shiley. Any others? <laughs> Corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting, I mean, excuse me, approving the minutes as amended, please say aye. 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 Opposed, the minutes are approved. Moving on to Kittitas Valley Wind Project, Mr. Cassidy. Afternoon, Chair Drew, FSEC Council and staff. This is Jared Cassidy with EDP Renewables for the Kittitas Valley Wind Power Project. We had nothing non-routine to report for this period. Thank you. Wild thank Horse you. Wind Power Project, Ms. Galbraith. Yes, thank you, Chair Drew, Council members and staff. For the record, this is Jennifer Galbraith representing Puget Sound Energy for the Wild Horse Wind Facility. For the month of April, I have nothing non-routine to report. Thank you. Thanks. Shahela's Generation Facility, Mr. Smith. Good afternoon, Chair Drew, Council members and staff. This is Jeremy Smith, the Operations Manager representing the Shahela's Generation Facility. I do not have anything non-routine the note for the month of April. Thank you. Grays Harbor Energy Center, Mr. Sharon. Ms. Snarsky. Yeah. Um, um, so, okay. I'll go, go ahead, ahead and give the update. That this is Joanne Snarsky stepping in on behalf of Sarah Randolph, the site specialist for Grays Harbor. Included in the council packet for your review is a copy of the air operating permit and associated technical support document. If you recall, in 2020, Grays Harbor submitted a request to amend their site certification agreement to upgrade their turbines with advanced gas path technology. That was approved by the council at the November 17th, 2020 council meeting, after which some regulatory activity was required. In January 2021, FSEC issued an amended prevention of significant deterioration permit to the facility to reflect their equipment change. Staff have been working with the facility and our contracts contractors at ORCA, which is the Olympic Regional Clean Air Authority, to develop and amend Title V air operating permit reflecting the advanced gas path technology change. We have drafts prepared, which are attached for your review, and we would like to ask the council to issue the documents for public comment beginning May 20th. This would initiate a 31 day public comment period. Following the public comment period, the draft permit documents as well as the responses to any substantive comments 
will go to the EPA for an additional 45 day review. It says here that if you have questions, Aaron Manley and Mike Schultz from Orca are on the line. And I'm not sure if that's true or not. Yes, we are here. Excellent. Thank you. Council members, do you have any questions about um, the air operating permit or the process in front of us? What uh, is laid out is that, oh, Mr. Levitt, go ahead. Hi, this is Eli Levitt with the Department of Ecology. I guess my question is, I know a public comment period is standard. Is it also normal when we're re-upping an air operating permit to do a public hearing for the members of the community? Uh, Ms. Bumpus? It, just to make sure I, I heard the question, uh, Council Member Levitt, you're asking if the council needs to have a hearing for the permit? Yeah, I guess I'm just, uh, I've heard in ecology, sometimes we do a public comment period and a public hearing. I, I'm curious if that was considered in this case. No, I don't believe we're uh, planning to do a, a hearing on the on the permit. We'll do public comment and I think that if uh, a, if a, a meeting or a hearing were requested, then the council could uh, consider doing that. Um, but uh, no, we, we're not anticipating uh, holding a, a hearing, but we will be taking public comment and reviewing the comments. And uh, if there's one requested, then the council could consider doing that. Okay, thank you. In the process going forward, as I understand it, is that um, we have the 30 day hearing and then um, the permit goes to EPA for their review. And after that, uh, depending on what comments we receive, if we receive comments, um, it would then come back to the council. However, if there are no comments, it will go into effect. Is that correct, Ms. Bumpus? That's correct. Okay. So um, what the staff is uh, recommending for us at this meeting is that we have a motion to um, put forward this permit for public comment. Stacey Brewster, I move that we um, put forward this permit for public comment. Second. Elizabeth Osborne, second. Are there um, any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on Chair to Columbia. Drew. Chair Drew, before moving on, there is one additional note under Grace Harbor. Um, oh, okay. And it's a, Go ahead. a short one. It, okay. it states here that the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permit is under review. And that's, then there are no other updates on at this time. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Columbia Solar, Mr. Cushing. Good afternoon, Chair Drew, Council Members, FSEC staff. This is Thomas Cushing speaking on behalf of Columbia Solar. There are no non-routine updates to report. Thank you. Columbia Generating Station. Uh, hello, this is Amy Moon. I'll be giving the update for um, Energy Northwest. There are no non-routine items to report for either the Columbia Generating Station or the Washington Nuclear Project 1 and 4, commonly known as the Industrial Development Complex. Are there any questions? No, there are not. Thank you. You're welcome. Goose, Goose Prairie Solar, Mr. Christ. Yeah, good afternoon, Chair Drew, SEC Council and staff. So this is Jacob Christ, Senior Project Manager. 
on behalf of Brookfield Renewable North mm -hmm. America, providing the Goose Prairie Solar Project update. So from a construction status schedule standpoint, the project remains on schedule, um, slightly ahead of schedule. Some key upcoming milestones uh, for commissioning activities. On June 18th, uh, we plan to start our 90-day soak with our utility BPA, and this will be classified as the energization of the site for test power only, um, where we'll be we will be uh, throttled to basically five megawatts for a period of time until the utility asks us to go to approximately 90% capacity sometime in, uh, my guess is late July, early August, um, June. So we're currently sitting at mechanical completion on one of the four feeders. We plan to be at mechanically complete on the rest of the feeders in the substation uh, by June 25th, and our expectation that we would receive a utility sign off and be able to declare to declare commercial operation is approximately September 30th at this time. Uh, from some key status updates, we've completed all the perimeter fence and substation fencing, uh, racking and tracker install is complete. Uh, at the time of this report, module install was nearing completion. I'm happy to report that it is complete now. Uh, and terminations are approximately at 75% and above ground wire management installation is still ongoing. Um, we're approaching completion with uh, the, the wire management and the substation is now progressed up into the 95% range. Um, as, as far as information submitted or being worked on with FSEC right now, I know that the O&M site the site certificate deliverables for the O&M team are in draft with our Brookfield O&M team and a third party Tetra Tech. Um, happy to report no discharge on the site in April. And then frequent, monitor, frequent monitoring is still occurring with WSP. Um, and then as far as a, a brief list of reports that were submitted to FSEC this month or last month, we submitted our Q1 quarterly report. Any questions? Are there any questions for Mr. Christ? Thank you. Exciting Thank you. time. Yes. High Top and Austria project update, Ms. Snarski. Yes, this is Joanne Snarski uh, for the record, and I'm stepping in for Sarah Randolph, the site specialist for High Top and Austria. FSEC staff are continuing to work with the developer on pre-construction requirements and plans. We are reviewing the initial site restoration plan and anticipate providing it to the council for your review ahead of the June council meeting. And there are no further updates. Thank you. Horse Heaven Wind Farm, Amy Moon, Ms. Moon. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, Council Chair Drew and FSEC Council members. For the record, once again, this is Amy Moon reporting on the Horse Heaven Wind Project. The FSEC Council recommendation was submitted to Governor Inslee on April 29th of 2024 as approved and directed by the Council at the April 17th meeting. FSEC staff received follow-up questions from the Governor's Office on May 7th requesting assistance in navigating and finding information within the recommendation packet. FSEC staff submitted a response to the governor's request on May 10th, identifying the locations within the Horse Heaven public and confidential record that address his questions. Per the revised code of Washington 80.50.100 subpart 3A, the governor has 60 days to do one of the following. Uh, one, approve the application by executing the site certification agreement. Two, reject the application, or three, direct the council to reconsider certain aspects of the proposed site certification agreement. The decision and or direction by the governor is due on June 28th of 2024. Does the council have any questions? Are there any questions from council members? Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Whistling Ridge, Mr. Caputo. Thank you, Chair Drew and Council members. There are two public hearings scheduled for this Thursday evening, May 16th, from 5 till 9 p.m. The Council will be receiving public comments on the applicant's two petitions, 
one to extend the expiration date of the site certification agreement and the second to amend the site certification agreement with a transfer of control of the agreement following the hearings on thursday staff will coordinate with our assistant attorney general on providing a legal advice memo may I answer any questions uh, one question i have is that it is a it, i understand it's now a hybrid meeting with uh, people welcome to attend here at um, the UTC office building or um, through Teams, is that correct? That is correct, Chair. And I will be here if anyone wants to join me. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Moving on to the Badger Mountain project update, Ms. Snarski. Thank you. For the record, this is Joanne Snarski, the Siting Specialist for Badger Mountain Solar. The initial phase of the Supplemental Cultural Resources Survey began this week. Our contractors are on site visually surveying the area that will be affected by the proposed project. Additionally, FSEC, in coordination with the Department of Ecology, have been working with the applicant to identify supplemental field assessment work for wetlands and other water resources. The supplemental work is intended to confirm and or eliminate wetland characteristics on the proposed site. This work is scheduled to begin after Memorial Day. Can I answer any questions? Are there any questions for Ms. Snarski? On Badger Mountain. OK, moving on to Watoma Solar, Mr. Caputo. Thank you, Chair Drew and Council members. Staff are finalizing the documents in support of issuing a mitigated determination of non-significance or MDNS. Issuance of an MDNS is followed by a minimum 14 day public comment period. Staff anticipate opening this public comment period on Monday, May 20th. Additionally, staff are meeting this week with our assistant attorney general and an administrative law judge with, with the Office of Administrative Hearings, Judge Gerard, to coordinate the activity leading up to the adjudicative proceedings. We anticipate reaching out to the council in the near future for dates of availability for these adjudicative proceedings. Lastly, the current review period for the Watoma project extends through June 28, 2024. As staff are looking towards scheduling adjudicated proceedings, we are also coordinating with the applicant on an extension request to include the time needed for the remaining activity. We anticipate bringing to an extension request to the council for a vote at the June 20th council meeting. May I answer any questions? Are there any questions for Mr. Caputo? Thank you. Hop Hill Solar, Mr. Barnes. For the record, this is John Barnes, FSEC staff for the Hop Hill application. Work is continuing with the applicant to complete studies and reports needed to make a SEPA determination. We continue to co coordinate and review the application with our contractor and contracted agencies and tribal governments. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carriger Solar, Ms. Snarski. Thank you, Chair Drew. EPSEC staff recently met with the applicant to review mitigation strategies for the visual impacts from the proposed facility. EPSEC staff made some final requests of the applicant to be addressed in the revised visual impact assessment. The applicant agreed to address this request in the revision and they will be submitting it for our review in the next few weeks. Also, we are continuing coordination with the Department of Ecology to receive confirmation of the additional wetland assessment work that is needed from the applicant to confirm wetland characteristics on and near the proposed facility. Can answer any questions? Are there any questions for Ms. Norsky? Thank you. Walula Gap, Mr. Barnes. Thank you, Chair Drew and Council Members. For the record, this is John Barnes, FSEC staff for the Walula Gap uh, application. Pursuant to RCW 80.50.0901 and WAC 463-26-B, 
0-5. The informational meeting and land use hearing for the Wallula Gap application took place on April 23rd, 2024. The meeting was conducted in person at the Kennewick Valley Grange, number 731, 2611 South Washington Street, Kennewick, Washington, 99337, as well as virtually. Six people signed up to comment during this portion of the meeting. The land use consistency hearing began at seven or at 630, excuse me. Hmm. During this time, the public was given an opportunity to provide testimony regarding the proposed project's consistency and compliance with land use plans and zoning ordinances. There was one commenter who signed up to speak. Additionally, FSEC has received four written comments in regards of these meetings. FSEC staff conducted a site visit with the applicant on April 24th to survey the project area. Review of the Wallula Gap application has begun. Staff are currently managing the review of the application with our contractor, contracted agencies, and tribal governments. Are there any questions? Are there any questions for Mr. Barnes? Thank you. I have one um, item, point of personal privilege, we would have called it in the legislature. We have a staff member who's choosing to retire for the second time, not from us, but um, having retired once, Mr. Dave Walker, whom I worked with at the Department of Licensing, um, was gracious enough to leave retirement and to come to help us establish our administrative services division. And uh, we very much appreciate it, although we promised him it would be a six month stint. He has stayed with us for two years. So even though we are sorry to see him go back into retirement, I personally want to say thank you very much for everything you have done, for all the terrific staff you have hired to be part of our team and to establish us as a standalone agency. Thank you, Treasurer. So we will miss you. With that, the meeting is adjourned.